Hey, I'm Simon and in this video, you'll get a first impression of the Webflow CMS and what you can do with it. This is the first part of a Webflow CMS mini series on my channel. So make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date. Let's get started now. First, we will discuss the term CMS. CMS stands for Content Management System. Its purpose is to manage web content, whether that would be images, text, or other content. And we'll get into different use cases and these options throughout the mini series, but this video is more about generally explaining the CMS. Basically, a CMS is a database that allows you to edit, store, and publish content in an efficient way and in an organized place the Webflow CMS interface. Webflow isn't the only tool that comes with a CMS. For example, WordPress also has a CMS, but as usually, we're only going to talk about Webflow on this channel and in this video. What are the most common use cases of a CMS? Well, the most prominent one here is probably a blog. Setting up a blog without a CMS is not the best idea because it will take you a lot more time to upload and structure your content. You'll see why in an upcoming video. And that's actually one of the main benefits of using a content management system. It's way more efficient, especially when it comes to really large scale projects or imagine a blog with a lot of different posts. You'll be way better off if your website is not completely static, but instead dynamic and CMS driven. This also goes for other sections like team members, for example, or frequently asked questions or also testimonials. But now let's actually jump into Webflow to check out its CMS interface. With an open project, I can simply access the CMS by clicking this icon here on the left side of our Webflow interface. And here you can see our CMS collections. You can think of them as different databases, you could say. So we've got one for blog posts, one for services, and one for team members. If we click this icon here, we can create a new collection. I won't do this for this tutorial, but I'll do this in one of the upcoming videos, definitely. And in this case, I'm just going to um, hit this icon here on the team members to show you some of the settings from this collection. So in this case, we have collection settings. This is just basically the name of the collection. And then we have the, the fields, and these fields are really important. You could think of them as different data types, you could say. So we have the name of a person, because this isn't team members, we need the name. Then we have the Slack, um, which is just a URL. Don't have to worry about this. And then we have the custom fields like job or the member picture. You can also see them on the right side here um, being highlighted when as I hover over them. And we can check out what is going to happen here inside of our different items. So here we have the different collection items like Louisa Wilson, Kylie Danford and other team members. And I'll just click here to open this item. And we have um, the job here. So the job field I just showed you before is now filled out here. And then we have the member picture also filled out here. And if we switch between these different collection items, the items inside of the team members list, we now have another name. We have Kylie Danford here with uh, the job sales manager and the, again, another image. The content of this collection is being used for a section inside of our build, the team members section here. So um, all of the content added inside of the CMS is being used here. You can see that the content is coming from a database by checking out the border color of the selected element. So in this case, we have the name here and you can see that the border is purple and you also have the label here in purple. Normally, this would be blue like this here. You can see that the border is blue and the element label here is also blue. So here you can see that everything is actually purple because we get the content from our content management system. And we can also open up the settings here on our text element. I'll just scroll down a bit like this. And you can see that the text is coming from the team members. And there, there is a drop down, a select field. And there, 
we can just uh, select from which field of the um, collection we're getting the content from. So in this case, it's the name because we obviously want to have the name. We could say um, we will instead get the job. And you can see here, <laughs> you get the text that's also being displayed here on the bottom um, because it's inherits from the same field inside of the collection. Now we have the job of these people um, instead of the name. And as you can see also, this is a key concept of Webflow collections. If you change um, the inheriting uh, from one field, for example, it will update on all instances. Changes on an instance, changes on an item inside of this collection list here um, will be reflected on all of the other items too. So we can um, switch it back to the name and we'll have the names of our team members again. Or we could deselect it. And this would mean that it doesn't get the content from any collection anymore. So here it would just be blue again. You can see that the border is blue, which just means that it's not dynamic anymore. It doesn't get the content from a database. And you can see that again, it updated on all different instances. Let's just switch back to the name field for a second. So we'll get the text from the team members and on select field here, we'll just select the name again. Great. We could also create a new field for our team member collection. And we can do this by just heading back to the CMS interface again. And here on the CMS collection settings, I will just um, head there and add a new field on this field here, on this um, option here. And you might be confused because there are a lot of different options here. And even if they are explained on the right side of the interface as you hover over um, the different options here, um, you might still be confused and it's okay. You can still build great things and uh, useful collections without knowing all of these options. I will just select the plain text field here, which is probably the one you're going to use the most at the beginning, at least. And here, we have the label and the label is basically just the name of this field. You can see it here. I'm just hovering over it on the right side here of the interface and I'll just call it tutorial field. And with this field saved, I can just go to the team members again. I'll just save the changes. I forgot to save the changes. I can go to the team members again and here, Inside of the different items, I can now see the tutorial field, which I just created before. And we can switch between these different uh, collection items here. And we'll see that there's this tutorial field everywhere now. I'm just going to add um, the tutorial field here, uh, the content to this collection item because it's the first of our collection items. And I'm just going to type in tutorial content. And I'm going to save the item. And here I'm going to close it again. And we, it didn't change anything right now. What we could do though, is to just um, switch the field here. I'll just scroll down to the tutorial field. And now you'd see that it disappears everywhere because the fields are empty in every other collection item except this item here because we just set it inside of the item. We could also just go into this collection item and type something in again. Hello. And save it. And then I'll just uh, close it again. And as you can see, now we also have content here. Another thing we could do, let's just uh, go back to this with the names. I just used the control and Z shortcut, which equals command and Z on Mac. And here we can also, for example, add a new paragraph. Actually, I'll just add a new element here, add a paragraph. And as you can see, again, it's updated it on every single item because we just explain, I just explained the concept before that changes made on one item inside of a collection list here are reflected on every single item. And we can, instead of just uh, changing the content here. I'll go back to the settings here again and get the text from the team members tutorial field. And as you can say, as you can see, now we have again the tutorial content and the 
hello content from our new created fields. All right, I hope that this video made you understand the key concepts of the Webflow CMS. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you how to create a CMS-driven team member section, just like the one I used in this video. I'll also explain how to create a CMS-driven blog, and I'll show you more great ways to use a content management system. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on these tutorials. If you think that this video here was helpful, then make sure to leave a like. It only takes one second and makes a huge difference. Thanks for watching and see you next time.